As always, please read the question and try it out on your own before moving on. What we're going to have to do first to solve this is to draw a free body diagram of the bucket of water. Now perhaps the most obvious force is the force of gravity that's pulling on the bucket of water in the downward direction. Since the bucket of water is attached to a rope, we would have a tension force. The question mentions that the tension is acting at an angle of 40 degrees with respect to the vertical. So what we've done is drawn a vertical line straight up and then we showed that the tension force is acting at a 40 degree angle relative to that vertical. We've also assumed that the bucket of water is moving to the right and as it does so, the air resistance force is pushing on it to the left. So there are the three forces acting on the bucket. Now because the bucket is moving at a constant speed, that means the acceleration is zero. And whenever the acceleration is zero, that means the sum of the forces is also equal to zero. More specifically, that means the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Before we can plug into these two equations, what we want to do is break the tension force into its y and x components. The y component would be pointing straight upward and the x component would be pointing to the right. We've labeled the y component t sub y and the x component t sub x. But it turns out we can do a little bit better than that. What we want to do is express the y and x components in terms of the tension t. Now, through the powers of trigonometry, we're going to see that ty is equal to t cosine of 40 and tx is equal to t sine of 40. If there are any questions about that, please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to respond. Now, once we've broken the tension force into the y and x components, my advice is to actually erase the tension force because we really only need the y and x components in order to solve the question. So let's go ahead and remove the tension force. We can now turn to the sum of the forces in the x direction. We can see from the diagram there are two forces acting in the x direction. We have t sine 40 which is pointing to the right and is therefore positive and the air resistance force r which is pointing to the left and is therefore negative. Let's fill those into this equation. Now for the sum of the forces in the y direction we have the t cosine 40 pointing upward and the gravitational force mg pointing downward so we can fill those in as well. Now we can proceed on to the y direction equation because we were given the mass of the bucket as being 620 kilograms so we can fill that in. We can also fill in the gravitational constant g of 9.8. We can then use our calculators to simplify 620 times 9.8. We can add that 6076 over to the other side and then divide by the cosine of 40. That will give us the tension which turns out to be approximately 7,932 newtons. Now the question didn't ask us for the tension force, but it is a useful result because we can substitute it in for the tension of the x direction equation. We could then add r over to the other side. And when we do so, we can see that the air resistance force r is equal to 7,932 times the sine of 40 newtons. Then of course we can use our calculator to simplify that to get approximately 5,098 newtons. So that would represent the force of air resistance acting on the bucket of water. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe and stay tuned for solutions to additional questions. Also note that you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on your screen.